Wealthy people do three things, man. They stop trading time for money. They make their money work for them. And they give as much value to people as they can. And so I learned that as I got older, that part really didn't make sense to me at the time. But the money working for you part, and I was like, what the hell? How do you make your money work for you? Mm. Again, all I know is how to go get money. So he says, wealthy people, first they get into stocks, then they start a business, and then they get real estate. I took my time. I researched the Warren Buffetts and the Peter Lynch's. And I'm not going to lie, in the beginning, that shit was like Chinese to me. Right. This is a foreign language. And so what happened to me was it started reminding me of being in the streets. Everything about it. And I heard this term one time that said the real gangsters are on Wall Street. Once you know how something works, then you can get good at it. But mm -hmm. if you and, and I really think the vast majority of humanity and I don't care what class you're in, mm -hmm. the vast majority of humanity does not understand how the world works. Yep. Therefore, they are at the mercy of the world. And the people that figure out how it works can change things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to understand how things work. So that's that's important for me, the understanding the basics and the fundamentals. Like once you start understanding the fundamentals, you give yourself power because you now understand, like you said, you see how the machine works. Right. And so most people look at the machine and marvel and say either I'm like most people look at the stock market. Most 98 percent of the people who I know look at the stock market and say, yo, that's not a game I can play. I'm staying away from it. Mm -hmm. And so the way the way it's set up is the world is set up. Well, listen cool, I don't even want you to play. Just give me your money, I'll play it for you. Right. So when we look at like banks, like we understand that banks don't necessarily work in our favor, right? So banks only give us 0.05% interest on the money we have there. Well, we can get 8% just by putting our money in the index fund. So why would I just sit my money in a bank and let the bank make all the money? Because all they're going to do is invest the money in for you. So they're now operating as the plug. They operate now as the man who, I'm going to front you this. I'm going to make my money. I'm going to take the cut. I'm going to give you just enough to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the plug. Who is the plug? The stock market. Mm -hmm. Right? And so once I understood the fundamentals of like, the most important thing too is we don't understand how money works. That's a whole different language in its own. The relationship with money in my community is you make money, just enough to pay bills. So... I realized how powerful it was for me to one become economically like powerful in my mind because the thing about investing especially in stocks is that piece of ownership of everything that I use now makes me say well if I own that Apple God I don't care about buying an Apple phone right. if I'm aware Levi's and I'm aware Timberlands if I can own VFC Corp then I own the stuff that I'm buying I'm okay with that like that subtle shift in my mindset changed everything for me because now I was after just owning everything that I consumed in the beginning. That was my introduction to the game. Let me just own everything I consume and then I'll feel OK. Owning a stock is like it's owning a percentage of a great business. And so when, once I understood that concept, I understood that the key to wealth is through ownership. Like that's what that's that was one of the things that made it click because I studied the wealthy people. The key to building wealth is not how much you can work. You can't work your way to wealth. You got to invest your way to. And all wealthy people, black, white, Asian, Chinese, they own a whole bunch of shit. The people who aren't wealthy is because they don't own nothing. You only have your money sitting in cash. If your money is just sitting in cash, realistically, you're becoming poorer every day. Right. Or they own depreciating assets. And that's what cash is. It's a depreciating asset because the more money they print, the more money that money loses value. Right. So if it's just sitting, it's the reason why the bank wants you to have your money there. So they can take it and use it and invest <laughs> it so much and be like, hey, it's just sitting, I'm going to give you 50 cents on whatever you had in there. Right. And so the idea of ownership was, you know, we can just start owning everything that we, no matter if it's just a stock, like that's powerful. Because if you can start owning the businesses that you now consume every day, you turn a one-time transaction to a lifetime of profit. Because if I go to the store and buy a pair of Nikes, that's a one-time transaction. In order for me to get something from them again, I got to come back and buy another pair of Nikes. But if I own the Nike stock, long as I've owned it, it's a profitable um, vehicle for me. So that one-time transaction be can become a lifetime of profit if I own that business.